Well guys, welcome back. As you noticed, the Super Duty now has wings installed. We got the wings installed yesterday and I owe a big thank you to my neighbors, Brian and Gordon, and then uh, Chris and Gary for driving out here and helping me get these wings installed. Here's some video clips I have of us installing the wings on the airplane. Good afternoon, my name is Chris Cole. I'm from Warren, Michigan. I came up here to give Mark a hand with his uh, 750 Super Duty build. I'm also building a 750 Super Duty, but I'm not nearly as far along as Mark is. And Gary? Gary Flattery uh, from Washington, Michigan. Also came up to help Mark uh, finish up some of the wing assembly. Uh, we're looking at uh, doing a stall with a, with a buddy of mine. Now with the wings attached to the airplane, there's a whole bunch of other little things I can get done now, starting with the pitot heat controller. You know, what's awesome about Dynon is all of these connectors are already installed on all of the wires. So now it makes it super simple to just put it in the right color, black to black, red to red, and white to white. And get in there, there you go. There you go, those are all in there. I've hooked these ones up. And now I just stuff the wire up into the wing. Sorry to interrupt for a minute here, but I forgot to mention or show you when I was installing this that I have that, con that, uh, that controller box mounted on four little gr rubber grommets just to maybe prevent a little bit of vibration from getting from basically the, the access plate or the skin of the airplane into that electronics box. I don't know if you need to do that. I don't know if it makes any difference, but I figure it's certainly not gonna hurt anything to have it cushioned a little bit and maybe protected from some vibration. That's a lot of wire. <laughs> I can put the screws in here now. One of the things I really kind of didn't think about when I installed this access panel here with a pitot heat controller is it's right above the strut. So it's, it might be hard. See how my screwdriver's at an angle to get to these screws back here? I have a short screwdriver. That might be what I have to use to get these back ones in, but uh, never even considered the strut being right here in the way. There it is, it is installed. And to give you an idea of how lazy I've become, you can see that these screws are nice and polished. And these screws on top of the wing, I didn't bother polishing because nobody can see them. I have my fuel cap labeled there. And we are making a fairing that goes behind here that will clean up the drag from that fuel cap. That's one of the things that'll be available on the kitplanenthusiast.com website here pretty soon. And speaking of fairings, on the right wing here, you can see just how beautiful these fairings look. Really gives it a nice finished look. I have the jury struts on the right wing with the associated fairings there. See how nice those look? Really gives it a nice, finished professional look, as opposed to a very unfinished look if you don't have the fairings. I can put the fairings on up here, but on the left wing, I can't put the jury struts on yet because when I painted them, I painted them the semi-gloss green instead of the gloss, 
because that's what I thought the whole airplane was going to be painted in. The right wing jury struts, I've already repainted those in a gloss. So I just have to repaint the left wing here and I can get the, the jury struts installed. Well, if you don't know, you can buy these fairings for your Zenith airplane on kitplaneenthusiast.com. We have complete fairing packages available for the 701, the 750 Stole, the Cruiser, and of course, the Zenith Super Duty. We have all of the strut fairings here. We have the lower strut to body fairing, which I don't have installed on mine quite yet. And we are coming out with some other nice fairings that I think you're going to like. So I did mention that we are coming out with a very small fairing that will attach right behind the fuel cap. And it's just going to streamline that a little bit and clean up the airflow and the drag behind that fuel cap. Mark Seaver from North American Aerospace was here uh, about a month ago. And we did scan all of these fairings. So these will be available pretty soon for your Super Duty. They go all the way from the back of the horizontal stab all the way up and over the top there. We also have available now, I just have to get it listed on the website, but this little fairing that goes in front of that dorsal fin. Normally the dorsal fin just ends right there, just, and there's a big opening. Uh, so this little, I made this one out of fiberglass and then of course we scanned it and that, as soon as I get it listed, will be available on the website. I also wanted to mention that if you guys are building the 750 Stole, we've updated the fairing that goes on the very front of the horizontal stab. It now continues all the way back, just like this one, to close up that air gap between the top of the fuselage and the bottom of the horizontal stab. So all of the new uh, kits for the 750 Stole will have the new updated fairing. Again, I just need to get the pictures list updated on the website, but that one is now shipping with the new kits. Now, I remember a couple episodes ago, I showed you that I'd finished up my rudder cables on this airplane. And you'll notice I have new cables on them now. What, I, what happened was when I, was, I finished doing the rudder cables and everything was completely done, I was sitting in the airplane and I, I felt like the pedals were too far back because I have pretty long legs and I wanted the pedals to go forward a little bit more. You can move the pedals forward or backwards by adjusting the little push rods that go up to the nose gear. But if you think about it, if you want to move both pedals forward, the only way to do that is to make the rudder cables longer. So what I did was I cut out the cables and I measured and I ordered 32 feet from Zenith. So I called Joyce at Zenith and I ordered 32 feet of cable and I'd split that in half, each one would be 16 feet, give me a couple extra inches to, to make the, you know, the loops at the end. So I got my 32 feet of cable, cut it in half, and each of those 16 foot pieces were too short. <laughs> so Joyce sent me exactly what I ordered, but I think that I meant to tell her 36 feet, but for some reason I told her 32. So I had to spend more money and reorder the rudder cable and this time, I just told her, just give me 40 feet. That way I know I'm good. And that is why I have so much extra off the end here. But now I'm gonna cut this off and clean up the back and get these done again. And notice I have a black piece of heat shrink tubing on the cable. I have that on there because when I cut the cable, that tubing keeps the ends from fraying. I'm going to use a Dremel to cut this but I wanna be very, very careful because if I even nick this cable, it will completely ruin the cable. So what I wanna do is I wanna put a little guard in there so that I don't hit it. All right, so now you can see with that heat shrink on there, the cable doesn't fray at all. And then I slide this one up here and we'll shrink that one on. There we go, now we have a nice finished rudder cable on there. All right guys, let's talk about the cool stuff now. How awesome is this airplane going to look with missiles on the wings? So I started off wanting to make a sidewinder and I thought the way to do it would be to buy some PVC pipe and carve out a nose 
And then I realized that was a dumb idea because all of these parts are readily available in the model rocket world. So I bought some cardboard tubes, a plastic nose cone, and I bought a sheet of balsa wood and cut out my own fins for the Sidewinder. And then after that, I made an AIM-7 here. And then I also made some uh, little white phosphorus rockets. So those might get mounted on the wings. Now, obviously, none of these rockets will actually launch from the airplane. <laughs> they will be bolted in place. And I'll, the way I'll do it is I will design a mount to go in the wings. It fits the camera mount holes. And you just have like an Adele clamp or something like this. I'll have two of them wrapped around there. And then this will bolt to the mount. So I haven't designed the mount system yet, but they'll basically just be clamped on with these clamps. Now, as I was making these missiles, I kind of learned a lot about the model rocket world. <laughs> and uh, so these ones here are probably not going to mount on the airplane because these are just cardboard tubes with balsa wood fins glued to the tube. And I don't really know how well that would stand up to a 100 mile an hour wind. I'm guessing they would probably be, probably be just fine because I actually had this one standing up and it fell over and it landed just like this. And I, you know, it didn't break the fins off. So they're glued on pretty well. But these ones here are the first ones I made. And these ones will probably just get hung on the wall. So that's where these rockets come into play. These are very expensive rocket kits, and they are all replicas of missiles. So we have this one here, it's called a bull puppy. I think it was a bull pup, I think it was what the original one was called. We have an AIM-120, and then this one here is an AMRAM-3. I used to know what all that stuff meant, and now I don't remember. But the difference in these is these are, like I said, they're very expensive, but high quality model rockets. And all the fins are plywood instead of balsa wood. And you'll notice these have, well, there's two things about the, this one here has cardboard tubes. These two on the ends here have, uh, they're either plastic or fiberglass tubes. So they're much, much stronger. <clears throat> and then you'll notice they have slots in them. And that is because these fins don't just get glued to the outside here. They actually go into the tube and then inside, I don't know if we can see it, but inside the tube is another smaller tube that's usually about a foot long or so. And that's what kind of holds the, the rocket motors. Now again, the rocket motors won't be installed, but when the fins go through these tubes, uh, they, they glue to the, the tube itself, and then also they get glued to that inner tube. So they're, they're much, much stronger and would, would definitely hold up uh, being on the wing of an airplane. And you can kind of see with this one here, uh, well, this one just goes through a little bit, but inside here, it's not in here right now, but there's another bigger tube that these, these ones go all the way in on the ends here and glue to that tube. <clears throat> and it's got a real uh, high quality, big plastic uh, nose cone on it. And the other thing I learned too, is that these cardboard tubes, so like for this rocket and this rocket, they actually make fiberglass sleeves that you put over the, the cardboard and then you mix up the same resin that I used to make uh, fiberglass fairings for the airplane and you fiberglass it. So these, these four rockets will be you know, super strong and, and high quality. And, and not all of them will get mounted on the airplane. Like this one's probably too long, but something like that would look good under the wing. You know, that one's only about 35 or 36 inches or so. And then maybe uh, something like this. So uh, I don't really plan on flying a lot with them on the wings, but if I'm just going to a pancake breakfast or if I fly somewhere, I can just carry them inside the airplane and then, you know, mount them on the wing for the air show or a fly-in or something, but I thought this would be pretty cool. And I did show on a previous video my fire control panel up there. It has a master arm switch 
and then they can either uh, select between bombs and missiles or the external tank, and then there's a little red button to push. Those switches obviously aren't wired to anything. It's just there for fun. You know, it's a military-themed airplane, so this is what's fun about the hobby to me, is coming up with cool military paint schemes and then doing fun stuff like hanging missiles on the wings. I don't know, guys, what do you think? Maybe this one would look good hanging under the wing. Certainly wouldn't want to get in front of me. All those slow airplanes in the pattern, better look out. Oh wait, I am that slow airplane in the pattern. Well guys, I'd love to stand in the hangar all day and chat with you guys and get some more work done on the wings, but I have to get to work. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again on the next video.